नमस्ते माई सेल्फ अंकिता श्रेया प्रसाद एंड यू आर लिसनिंग टू अलॉन्ग विथ एन सी आर टी इलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ ऑडियो वीडियो बुक प्रेजेंटेड बाई आर्ट स्किल पैशन यूनिट टू सोल्यूशंस इन नॉर्मल लाइफ वी रेयरली कम अक्रॉस प्यू सब्सटेंसेस मोस्ट ऑफ दीज आर मिक्सचर्स कंटेनिंग टू और मोर प्यूर सब्सटेंसेस देर यूटिलिटी और इम्पोर्टेंस इन लाइफ डिपेंड्स ऑन देर कंपोजिशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल्स द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ब्रास मिक्सचर ऑफ कॉपर एंड जिंक आर क्वाइट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दोज ऑफ जर्मन सिल्वर मिक्सचर ऑफ कॉपर जिंक एंड निकल और ब्रोन्स मिक्सचर ऑफ कॉपर एंड टिन वन पार्ट पर मिलियन पी पी एम ऑफ फ्लोराइड आयोन्स इन वाटर प्रिवेंट्स टूथ डी के वाइल्ड वन पॉइंट फाइव पी पी एम कॉज दी टूथ टू बिकम मोल्टेड एंड हाई कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ फ्लोराइड आयोन्स कैन बी पॉइजनस फॉर एग्जाम्पल सोडियम फ्लोराइड इज यूज इन रैड पॉइजन Intravenous injections are always dissolved in water containing salts at particular ionic concentration that match with blood plasma concentration and so on. In this unit we will consider mostly liquid solutions and their formation. This will be followed by studying the properties of the solutions like vapor pressure and colligative properties. we will begin with the types of solutions and then various alternatives in which concentration of a solute can be expressed in liquid solution 2.1 types of solutions solutions are homogeneous mixture of two or more than two components by homogeneous mixture we mean that its composition and properties are uniform throughout the mixture Generally the component that is present in the largest quantity is known as solvent. Solvent determines the physical state in which solution exists. One or more components present in the solution other than solvent are called solutes. In this unit we shall consider only binary solutions that is consisting of two components. Here Each component may be solid, liquid or in gaseous state and are summarized in table 2.1. Table 2.1 Types of solution. Gaseous solution. Solute gas, solvent gas. Example, mixture of oxygen and nitrogen gas. Solute liquid solvent gas. Chloroform mixed with nitrogen gas. solute solid solvent gas camphor in nitrogen gas liquid solutions solute gas solvent liquid example oxygen dissolved in water solute liquid solvent liquid ethanol dissolved in water solute solid solvent liquid example glucose dissolved in water solid solutions solute gas solvent solid example solution of hydrogen in palladium solute liquid solvent solid example amalgam of mercury with sodium solute solid solvent solid example copper dissolved in gold 2.2 expressing concentration of solutions composition of a solution can be described by expressing its concentration the latter can be expressed either quantitatively or qualitatively for example qualitatively we can say that the solution is dilute that is relatively very small quantity of solute or it is concentrated that is relatively very large quantity of solute but in real life these kinds of description can add to lot of confusion and thus the need for a quantitative description of the solution there are several ways by which we can describe the concentration of the solution quantitatively first mass percent w divided by w 
the mass percentage of a component of a solution is defined as mass percent of a component is equal to mass of the component in the solution divided by total mass of the solution into 100 for example if a solution is described by 10 percent glucose in water by mass it means that 10 gram of glucose is dissolved in 90 gram of water resulting in a 100 gram solution concentration described by mass percentage is commonly used in industrial chemical applications for example chemical bleaching solution contains 3.62 mass percentage of sodium hypochlorite in water second volume percentage v divided by v the volume percentage is defined as volume percent of a component is equal to volume of the component divided by total volume of solution into 100 for example 10 percent ethanol solution in water means that 10 ml of ethanol is dissolved in water such that the total volume of the solution is 100 ml solutions containing liquids are commonly expressed in this unit for example 35 percent v divided by v solution of ethylene glycol and antifreeze is used in cars for cooling the engine at this concentration the antifreeze lowers the freezing point of water to 255.4 kelvin minus 17.6 degrees celsius third mass by volume percentage w divided by v another unit which is commonly used in medicine and pharmacy is mass by volume percentage it is the mass of solute dissolved in 100 ml of the solution fourth parts per million when a solute is present in trace quantities it is convenient to express concentration in parts per million ppm and is defined as parts per million is equal to number of parts of component divided by total number of parts of all components of the solution into 10 to the power 6 as in the case of percentage concentration in parts per million can also be expressed as mass to mass volume to volume and mass to volume a liter of sea water which weighs 1030 grams contains about 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 grams of dissolved oxygen O2 such a small concentration is also expressed as 5.8 gram per 10 to the power 6 gram 5.8 ppm of sea water the concentration of pollutants in water or atmosphere is often expressed in terms of new g meter liter to the power of minus 1 or ppm fifth mole fraction commonly used symbol for mole fraction is x and subscript used on the right hand side of x denotes the component it is defined as mole fraction of a component is equal to number of moles of the component divided by total number of moles of all the components for example in a binary mixture if the number of moles of a and b are na and nb respectively the mole fraction of a will be xa is equal to na divided by na plus nb for solution containing i number of components we have xi is equal to ni divided by n1 plus n2 plus so on ni is equal to ni divided by sigma ni it can be shown that in a given solution sum of all the mole fraction is unity that is x1 plus x2 plus so on xi is equal to 1 mole fraction units is very useful in relating some physical properties of solution say vapor pressure with the concentration of the solution and quite useful in describing the calculations involving gas mixture sixth 
molarity molarity m is defined as a number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 liter or 1 cubic decimeter of solution molarity is equal to moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter for example 0.25 mole liter to the power of minus 1 or 0.5 m solution of naoh means that 0.25 mole of naoh has been dissolved in 1 liter or 1 cubic decimeter seventh molality molality m is defined as the number of moles of the solute per kilogram kg of the solvent and is expressed as molality m is equal to moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kg for example 1 mole kg to the power of minus 1 or 1 m solution of kcl means that 1 mole 74.5 grams of kcl is dissolved in 1 kg of water each methods of expressing concentration of the solutions has its own merits and demerits mass percent ppm mole fraction molality are independent of temperature whereas molality is function of temperature this is because volume depends on temperature and the mass does not 2.3 solubility solubility of a substance is its maximum amount that can be dissolved in specified amount of solvent at a specified temperature it depends upon the nature of solute and solvent as well as temperature and pressure let us consider the effect of this factor in solution of a solid or gas in a liquid 2.3.1 solubility of a solid in liquid every single solid does not dissolve in a given liquid while sodium chloride and sugar dissolve readily in water naphthalene and anthracene do not on the other hand naphthalene and anthracene dissolve readily in benzene but sodium chloride and sugar do not It is obvious that polar solvent dissolve in polar solvents and non-polar solutes in non-polar solvents. In general, a solute dissolve in a solvent if the intermolecular interactions are similar in the two or we may say like dissolve like. When a solid solute is added to the solvent, some solute dissolve and its concentration increases in solution this process is known as dissolution some solute particles in solution collide with the solid solute particles and get separated out of solution this process is known as crystallization a stage is reached when the two processes occur at the same rate Under such conditions number of solute particles going into solution will be equal to the solute particles separating out and a state of dynamic equilibrium is reached solute plus solvent give rise to solution at this stage the concentration of solute in solution will remains constant under the given condition that is temperature and pressure Similar processes is followed when gas are dissolved in liquids solvents such a solution in which no more solute can be dissolved at the same temperature and pressure is called a saturated solution an unsaturated solution is one in which more solute can be dissolved at the same temperature the solution which is in dynamic equilibrium with undissolved solute is the saturated solution and contains the maximum amount of solute dissolved in a given amount of solvent thus the concentration of solute in such a solution is its solubility earlier we have observed that solubility of one substance into another depends on the nature of the substances in addition to these variables 
two other parameters that is temperature and pressure also control this phenomena effects of temperature the solubility of a solid in a liquid is significantly affected by temperature changes consider the equilibrium represented by equation 2.10 this being dynamic equilibrium must follow the chantier's principle in general if in a nearly saturated solution the dissolution process is endothermic delta solution h greater than 0 the solubility should increase with rise in temperature and if it's exothermic delta solution h lesser than 0 the solubility should decrease these trends are also observed experimentally effect of pressure pressure does not have any significant effect on solubility of solids in liquids it is so because solids and liquids are highly incompressible and practically remain unaffected by changes in pressure 2.3.2 solubility of a gas in a liquid many gases dissolved in water oxygen dissolves only into a small extent in water it is the dissolved oxygen which sustains all aquatic life on the other hand hydrogen chloride glass hcl is highly soluble in water solubility of gases in liquids is greatly affected by pressure and temperature the solubility of gas increase with increase of pressure for solution of gases in a solvent consider a system as shown in figure 2.1a figure 2.1 effect of pressure on the solubility of a gas the concentration of dissolved gas is proportional to the pressure on the gas above the solution the lower part is solution and the upper part is gaseous system at pressure p and temperature t assume the system to be in a state of dynamic equilibrium that is under these conditions rate of gaseous particles entering and leaving the solution phase is the same now increase the pressure over the solution phase by compressing the gas to a smaller volume figure 2.1b this will increase the number of gaseous particles per unit volume over the solution and also the rate at which the gaseous particles are striking the surface of solution to the enter at the solubility of gas will increase you until a new equilibrium is reached resulting in an increase in the pressure of a gas above the solution and thus its solubility increases henry was the first to give a quantitative relationship between pressure and solubility of a gas in a solvent which is known as henry's law the law states that at a constant temperature the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas present above the surface of liquid or solution dalton's a uh, contemporary of henry also concluded independently that the solubility of a gas in a liquid solution is a fusion of particle pressure of the gas if we use the mole fraction of a gas in the solution as a measure of its solubility then it can be said that the mole fraction of gas in the solution is proportional to the partial pressure of the gas over the solution the most commonly used for form of henry's law states that the partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase p is proportional to the mole fraction of the gas x in the solution and is expressed as p is equal to k h x here k h is the henry's law constant if we draw a graph between partial pressure of the gas versus mole fraction of the gas in solution then we should get a plot of the type as shown in figure 2.2 figure 2.2 experimental resulting of the solubility of hcl gas in cyclohexane at 293 kelvin the slope of the line is the henry's law constant
Different gases have different KH values at same temperature. Table 2.2 This suggests that KH is a function of nature of the gas. It is obvious from equation 2.11 that higher the value of KH at a given pressure, the lower is the solubility of the gas in the liquid. It can be seen from table 2.2 that KH values for both N2 and O2 increase with increase of temperature indicating the dissolubility of gases. Increases with increase of temperature. It is due to this reason that aquatic species are more comfortable in cold water rather than in warm water. Henry's law finds several applications in industry and explains some biological phenomena. Notable among these are to increase the solubility of CO2 in soft drinks and soda water, the bottle is sealed under high pressure. Scuba divers must cope with the high concentration of dissolved gases while breathing air at high pressure under water. Increased pressure increases the solubility of atmospheric gases in the blood. When the divers come towards surface, the pressure gradually decreases. This releases the dissolved gases and leads to the formation of bubbles of nitrogen in the blood. This block capillaries and creates a medical conditions known as bends, which are painful and dangerous to life. To avoid bends as well as the toxic effects of high concentration of nitrogen in the blood. The tank used by scuba divers are filled with air diluted with helium. 11.7% helium, 56.2% nitrogen and 32.1% oxygen. At higher altitudes, the partial pressure of oxygen is less than that at the ground level. This leads to the lower concentrations of oxygen in the blood and tissues of people living at high altitudes or climbers. Low blood oxygen causes climbers to become weak and unable to think clearly. Symptoms of a condition known as anoxia. Effect of temperature. Solubility of gas in liquid decreases with rise in temperature. When dissolved, the gas molecules are present in a liquid phase and the processes of dissolution can be considered. Similar to condensation and heat is evolved in this process. We have learnt in the last section that dissolution process involves dynamic equilibrium and thus must follow Le Chantier's principle. As dissolution is an exothermic process, the solubility should decrease with increase of temperature. 2.4 Vapor Pressure of Liquid Solutions Liquid solutions are formed when solvent is a liquid. The solute can be a gas, a liquid or a solid. Solution of gases in liquids have already been discussed in section 2.3.2. In this section, we shall discuss the solutions of liquid and solids in a liquid. Such solutions may contain one or more volatile components. Generally, the liquid solvent is volatile. The solute may or may not be volatile. We shall discuss the properties of only binary solutions. That is the solution containing two components, namely the solutions of first liquids in liquids and second solids in liquids 2.4.1 vapor pressure of liquid liquid solutions let us consider a binary solution of two volatile liquids and denote the two components as one and two when taken in a closed vessel both the components would evaporate and eventually an equilibrium would be established between vapor phase and the liquid phase. Let the total vapor pressure at this stage be P total and P1 and P2 be the partial vapor pressure of the two components 1 and 2 respectively. 
These partial pressures are related to the mole fractions x1 and x2 of the two components 1 and 2 respectively. The French chemist Francois Martel Rolt 1886 gave the quantitative relationship between them. The relationship is known as the Rolt's law. This states that for a solution of volatile liquids the partial vapor pressure of each component of the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction present in solution. Thus for component 1 P1 is directly proportional to x1 and P1 is equal to P1 not x1 where P1 not is the vapor pressure of pure component 1 at the same temperature similarly for component 2 P2 is equal to P2 not x2 where P2 not represent the vapor pressure of the pure component 2 According to Dalton's law of partial pressure the total pressure P total over the solution phase in the container will be the sum of the partial pressure of the components of the solution and is given as P total is equal to P1 plus P2 substituting the values of P1 and P2 we get P total is equal to x1 P1 not plus x2 P2 not is equal to 1 minus x2 into p1 not plus x2 p2 not is equal to p1 not plus p2 not minus p1 not into x2 following conclusions can be drawn from equation 2.16 total vapor pressure over the solution can be related to the mole fraction of any one component second total vapor pressure over the solution varies linearly with the mole fraction of component 2 third depending on the vapor pressure of the pure components 1 and 2 total vapor pressure over the solution decreases or increases with the increase of the mole fraction of component 1 a plot of p1 or p2 versus the mole fraction x1 and x2 for a solution gives a linear plot as shown in figure 2.3 figure 2.3 the plot of vapor pressure and mole fraction of an ideal solution at constant temperature the dashed lines 1 and 2 represent the partial pressure of the components it can be seen from the plot that p1 and p2 are directly proportional to x1 and x2 respectively the total vapor pressure is given by line marked third in the figure these lines 1 and 2 passes through the points from which x1 and x2 are equal to unity similarly the plot line 3 of p total versus x2 is also linear figure 2.3 the minimum value of p total is p1 not and the maximum value is p2 not assuming that component 1 is less volatile than component 2 that is p1 not lesser than p2 not the composition of vapor phase in the equilibrium with the solution is determined by the partial pressure of the components f y1 and y2 are the mole fractions of the components 1 and 2 respectively in the vapor phase then using dalton's law of partial pressure P1 is equal to Y1 P total. P2 is equal to Y2 P total. In general, P I is equal to P I P total. 2.4.2 Rolle's law as a special case of Henry's law. According to Rolle's law, the vapor pressure of a volatile component in a given solution is given by P1 is equal to x i p i not in the solution of a gas in a liquid one of the component is so volatile that it exists as a gas and we have already seen that its solubility is given by henry's law which states that p is equal to k h x if we compare the equations of rolle's law and henry's law it can be seen that the partial pressure of the volatile component or gas is directly proportional to its mole fraction in solution 
only the proportionality constant k h differs from p1 not the rolls law becomes a special case of henry's law in which k h becomes equal to p1 not 2.4.3 vapor pressure of solutions of solids in liquids another important class of solution consists of solid dissolved in liquid for example sodium chloride glucose urea and cane sugar in water and iodine sulfur dissolved in carbon disulfide some physical properties of these solutions are quite different from those of pure solvents for example vapor pressure we have learnt in unit 5 class 11th that liquids at given temperature vaporize and under equilibrium condition pressure exerted by the vapors of the liquids over the liquid phase is called vapor pressure figure 2.4 a figure 2.4 decrease in the vapor pressure of the solvent on account of the presence of solute in the solvent a evaporation of the molecules of the solvent from its surface is denoted by purple circle b in a solution solute particles have been denoted by green circle and they also occupy part of the surface area in pure liquid the entire surface is occupied by the molecules of the liquid if a non volatile solute is added to a solvent to a given a solution figure 2.4b the vapor pressure of the solution is solely from the solvent alone this vapor pressure of the solution at a given temperature is found to be lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent at the same temperature in the solution the surface has both solute and solvent molecules thereby the fraction of the surface covered by the solvent molecules gets reduced consequently the numbers of solvent molecules escaping from the surface is correspondingly reduced thus the vapor pressure is also reduced the decrease in the vapor pressure of solvent depends on the quantity of non volatile solute present in the solution irrespective of its nature for example decrease in the vapor pressure of water by adding 1.0 mole of sucrose to 1 kg of water is nearly similar to that produced by adding 1.0 mole of sucrose to 1 kg of water is nearly similar to that produced by adding 1.0 mole of urea to the same quantity of water at the same temperature rolls law in its general form can be stated as for any solution the partial vapor pressure of each volatile component in the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction in binary solution let us denote the solvent by 1 and solute by 2 when the solute is non volatile only the solvent molecules are present in vapor phase and contribute to vapor pressure let p1 be the vapor pressure of the solvent x1 be its mole fraction p1 not b is vapor pressure in the pure state then according to rolls law p1 is directly proportional to x1 and p1 is equal to x1 p1 not the proportionality constant is equal to the vapor pressure of pure solvent p1 not a plot between the vapor pressure and the mole fraction of the solvent is linear figure 2.5 if a solution obeys rolls law for all concentration its vapor pressure would vary linearly from 0 to the vapor pressure of the pure solvent 2.5 ideal and non ideal solutions liquid liquid solutions can be classified into ideal and non ideal solutions on the basis of rolls law 2.5.1 ideal solutions the solutions which obey rolls law over the entire range of concentration are known as ideal solutions the ideal solutions have two other important properties 
the enthalpy of mixing of the pure components to form the solution is zero and the volume of mixing is also zero that is delta mix h is equal to zero delta mix v is equal to zero it means that no heat is absorbed or evolved when the components are mixed also the volume of solution would be equal to the sum of volumes of two components at molecular level ideal behavior of the solutions can be explained by considering two components a and b in pure components the intermolecular attractive interactions will be of types aa and bb whereas in the binary solution in addition to these two interactions ab type of interactions will also be present if the intermolecular attractive forces between the aa and bb are nearly equal to those between ab this leads to the formation of ideal solution a perfectly ideal solution is rare but some solutions are nearly ideal in behavior solution of n hexane and n pentane bromomethane and chloroethane benzene and toluene etc falls into this category 2.5.2 non ideal solutions when a solution does not obey rolls law over the entire range of concentration then it is called non ideal solution the vapor pressure of such a solution is either higher or lower than that predicted by rolls law equation 2.16 if it is higher the solution exhibits positive deviation and if it is lower it exhibits negative deviations from rolls law the plots of vapor pressure as a function of mole fractions for such solutions are shown in figure 2.6 the cause of these deviations in the nature of interactions at the molecular level In case of positive deviation from Rolle's law, AB interactions are weaker than those between AA or BB. That is, in case the intermolecular attractive forces between the solute solvent molecules are weaker than those between the solute solute and solvent solvent molecules. This means that in such solutions, molecules of A or B will find it. easier to escape than in pure state this will increase the vapor figure 2.6 the vapor pressure of two component system as a function of composition a a solution that shows positive deviation from rolls law and b a solution that shows negative deviation from rolls law pressure and result in positive deviation mixture of ethanol and acetone behave in this manner in pure ethanol moles are hydrogen bonded on adding acetone its molecules get in between the host molecules and break some of the hydrogen bonds between them due to weakening of interactions the solution shows positive deviation from rolls law figure 2.6 a in a solution formed by adding carbon disulfide to acetone the dipolar interactions between solute solvent molecules are weaker than respective interactions among the solute solute and solvent solvent molecules this solutions also shows positive deviation in case of negative deviations from rolls law the intermolecular attractive forces between aa and bb are weaker than those between ab and leads to decrease in vapor pressure resulting in negative deviations an example of this type is a mixture of phenol and aniline in this case the intermolecular hydrogen bonding between phenolic proton and lone pair on nitrogen atoms of aniline is stronger than the respective intermolecular hydrogen bonding between similar molecules similarly a mixture of chloroform and acetone forms a solution with negative deviation from rolls law this is because 
chloroform molecules is able to form hydrogen bond with acetone molecules as shown. This decreases the escaping tendency of molecules for each component and consequently the vapor pressure decreases resulting in negative deviation from Rolle's law. Figure 2.6b Some liquids are making from azeotopes which are binary mixtures having the same composition in liquid and vapor phase and boil at a constant temperature. In such cases, it is not possible to separate the components by fractional distillation. There are two types of azeotopes called minimum boiling azeotope and maximum boiling azeotope. The solution will show a large positive deviation from Rolle's law from minimum boiling azeotopes at a specific composition. For example, ethanol water mixture obtained by fragmentation of sugars on fractional distillation gives a solution containing approximately 95% by volume of ethanol. Once this composition known as azeotrope composition has been achieved. The liquid and vapor have the same composition and no further separation occurs. The solution that show large negative deviation from Rolle's law from maximum boiling azeotope at a specific composition. Nitric acid and water is an example of this class of azeotrope. This azeotrope has the approximate composition 68%. Nitric acid and 32% water by mass with a boiling point of 393.5 Kelvin. 2.6 Colligative properties and determination of molar mass. We have learnt in section 2.4.3 that the vapor pressure of solution decreases when a non volatile solute is added to a volatile solvent. There are many properties of solutions which are connected with this decrease of vapor pressure. These are first, relative lowering of vapor pressure of the solvent, second, depression or freezing point of the solvent, third, elevation of boiling point of the solvent and fourth osmotic pressure of the solution all these properties depend on the number of solute particles irrespective of the nature relative to the total number of particles present in the solution such properties are called colligative properties colligative from latin co means together ligare means to bind in the following sections, we will discuss these properties one by one. 2.6.1 Relative Lowering of Vapor Pressure We have learnt in section 2.4.3 that the vapor pressure of a solvent in solution is less than that of pure solvent. Rolt established that the lowering of vapor pressure depends on the concentration of the solute particles and it is independent of their identity. The equation 2.20 given in section 2.43 establishes a relationship between vapor pressure of the solution, mole fraction and vapor pressure of the solvent that is P1 is equal to X1 P1 naught. The reduction in the vapor pressure of solvent delta P1 is given as Delta P1 is equal to P1 naught minus P1 is equal to P1 naught minus P1 naught X1 is equal to P1 naught into 1 minus X1. Knowing that X2 is equal to 1 minus X1, equation 2.23 reduces to Delta P1 is equal to X2 P1 naught. In a solution containing several long volatile solutes, the lowering of the vapor pressure depends on the sum of the mole fraction of different solutes. Equation 2.24 can be written as delta P1 divided by P1 naught is equal to P1 naught minus P1 divided by P1 naught is equal to X2. The expression on the left hand side of the equation as mentioned earlier is called relative lowering of vapor pressure and is equal to the mole fraction of the solute. 
the above equation can be written as p1 not minus p1 divided by p1 not is equal to n2 divided by n1 plus n2 since x2 is equal to n2 divided by n1 plus n2 here n1 and n2 are the number of moles of solvent and solute respectively present in the solution for dilute solutions n2 lesser than n1 hence neglecting n2 in the denominator we have p1 not minus p1 divided by p1 not is equal to n2 divided by n1 or p1 not minus p1 divided by p1 not is equal to w2 into m1 divided by m2 into w1 here w1 and w2 are the masses and m1 and m2 are the molar masses of the solvent and solute respectively from equation 2.28 knowing all other quantities the molar masses of solute m2 can be calculated 2.62 elevation of boiling point we have learnt in unit 5 class 11th that the vapor pressure of a liquid increases with increase of temperature it boils at temperature at which it vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure for example water boils at 373.15 kelvin 100 degrees celsius because at this temperature the vapor pressure of the water is 1.013 bar 1 atmosphere we have also learnt in the last section that vapor pressure of the solvent decreases in the presence of non volatile solute figure 2.7 depicts the variation of vapor pressure of the pure solvent and solution as a function of temperature for example the vapor pressure of an aqueous solution of sucrose is less than 1.013 bar at 373.15 kelvin in order to make this solution boil its vapor pressure must be increased to 1.013 bar by raising the temperature above the boiling temperature of the pure solvent water thus the boiling point of a solution is always higher than that of the boiling point of pure solvent in which the solution is prepared as shown in figure 2.7 figure 2.7 the vapor pressure curve for solution lies below the curve for pure water The diagram shows that delta T B denotes the elevation of boiling point of solvent in solution. Similar to lower of vapor pressure, the elevation of boiling point also depends on the number of solute molecules rather than the nature. A solution of one mole of sucrose in thousand gram of water boils at three seventy three point. 52 kelvin at one atmospheric pressure let tb not be the boiling point of pure solvent and tb be the boiling point of solution the increase in the boiling point delta tb is equal to tb minus tb not is known as elevation of boiling point experiments have shown that for dilute solutions the elevation of boiling point delta tb is directly proportional to the molar concentration of the solute in a solution thus delta tb directly proportional to m or delta tb is equal to kbm here m molality is the number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 kg of solvent and the constant of proportionality kb is called boiling point elevation constant or molar elevation constant E bilioscopic constant the unit of kb is k kg mole to the power minus 1 values of kb for common solvents are given in table 2.3 if w2 gram of solute of molar mass m2 is dissolved in w1 gram of solvent then molality of m of this solution is given by the expression m is equal to w2 divided by m2 divided by w1 divided by 1000 is equal to 1000 into w2 divided by m2 into w1 substituting the value of 
molality in equation 2.30 we get delta tb is equal to kb into 1000 into w2 divided by m2 into w1 m2 is equal to 1000 into w2 into kb divided by delta tb into w1 thus in order to determine m2 molar mass of the solute known mass of solute in a known mass of solvent is taken as delta tb is determined experimentally for a known solvent whose kb value is known 2.6.3 depression of freezing point the lowering of vapor pressure of a solution causes lowering of the freezing point compared to that of the pure solvent figure 2.8 figure 2.8 diagram showing delta tf depression of freezing point of a solvent in a solution we know that at the freezing point of substance the solid phase in dynamic equilibrium with the liquid phase thus the freezing point of a substance may be defined as the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the substance in its liquid phase is equal to its vapor pressure in the solid phase a solution will freeze when its vapor pressure equals to the vapor pressure of the pure solid solvent as in clear from figure 2.8 according to rolls law when non volatile solid is added to the solvent its vapor pressure decreases and now it would become equal to that of solid solvent at lower temperature thus the freezing point of the solvent decreases let tf not be the freezing point of pure solvent and tf be its freezing point when non volatile solute is dissolved in it the decrease in freezing point delta tf is equal to t not f minus tf is known as depression in freezing point similar to elevation of boiling point depression of freezing point delta tf for dilute solution ideal solution is directly proportional to molality of m of the solution thus delta tf proportional to m delta tf is equal to kfm the proportionality constant kf which depends on the nature of the solvent is known as freezing point depression constant or molar depression constant or chryoscopic constant the unit of kf is k kg mole to the power minus 1 value of k for some common solvents are listed in table 2.3 if w2 gram of solute having molar mass as m2 present in w1 gram of solvent produces the depression in freezing point delta tf of the solvent then molality of the solute is given by the equation m is equal to w2 divided by m2 divided by w1 divided by 1000 substituting this value of molality in equation 2.34 we get delta tf kf into w2 divided by m2 divided by w1 divided by 1000 delta tf is equal to kf into w2 into 1000 divided by m2 into w1 m2 is equal to kf into w2 into 1000 divided by delta tf into w1 thus for determining the molar mass of the solute we should know the quantities w1 w2 delta tf along with the molar freezing point depression constant the values of kf and kb which depend upon the nature of the solvent can be ascertained from the following relations kf is equal to r into m1 into tf square divided by 1000 into delta fusion h kb is equal to r into m1 into tb square divided by 1000 into delta vapor h here the symbols of r and m1 stands for the gas constant and molar mass of the solvent respectively and tf and tb denote the freezing point and the boiling point of the pure solvent respectively in kelvin further delta fusion h and delta vapor h represent the enthalpy for the fusion and vaporization of solvent respectively table 2.3 molar building point equation and freezing point depression constant for some solvents 
2.6.4 osmosis and osmotic pressure there are many phenomena which we observe in nature or at home for example raw mangoes swirling when pickled in brine salt water bitter flower reveal when placed in fresh water blood cells collapse when suspended in saline water etc if we look into these processes we find one thing common in all that is all these substances are bound by membranes these membranes can be of animals or vegetable origin and these occur naturally such as pigs bladder or parchment or can be synthetic such as cellophane these members appear to be continuous sheet or films if they contain a network of sub microscopic holes or pores small solvent molecules like water can pass through these holes but the passage of bigger molecules like solute is hindered members having this kind of properties are known as semi permeable membranes spm assume that only solvent molecules can pass through these semi permeable membranes if this membrane is placed between the solvent and solution as shown in figure 2.9 the solvent molecules will flow through the membrane from pure solvent to the solution this process of flow of the solvent is called osmosis the flow will continue till the equilibrium is attained the flow of the solvent from its side to solution side across a semi permeable membrane can be stopped if some extra pressure is applied on the solution this pressure that just stops the flow of solvent is called osmotic pressure of the solution the flow of solvent from dilute solution to the concentrated solution across a semi permeable membrane is due to osmosis the important point to be kept in mind is that solvent molecules always flow from lower concentration to higher concentration of solution the osmotic pressure has been found to dependent on the concentration of the solution The osmotic pressure of a solution is the excess pressure that must be applied to a solution to prevent osmosis that is to stop the passage of solvent molecules through a semi permeable membrane into the solution this is illustrated in figure 2.10 figure 2.10 the excess pressure equal to the osmotic pressure must be applied on the solution side to prevent osmosis Osmotic pressure is a colligative property that is depends on the number of solute molecules and not on the identity. For dilute solution it has been found experimentally that osmotic pressure is proportional to the molarity C of the solution at a given temperature T. Thus pi is equal to CRT. Here pi is the osmotic pressure and R is the gas constant. pi is equal to n2 divided by v into rt here v is the volume of solution in liters containing nt n2 molecules of solute if w2 grams of solute of molar mass m2 is present in the solution then n2 is equal to w2 divided by m2 and we can write pi v is equal to w2 rt divided by m2 or m2 is equal to w2 rt divided by pi v thus knowing the quantities w2 t pi and v can calculate the molar mass of the solute measurement of osmotic pressure provides another method of determining molar masses of solutes this method is widely used to determine molar masses of proteins polymers and other micromolecules the osmotic pressure method has the advantage over other methods as pressure measurement it is around the room temperature and the molarity of the solution is used instead of molality as compared to other colligative properties its magnitude is large even for very dilute solutions the technique of osmotic pressure for determination of molar mass of solute is particularly useful for biomolecules as they are generally not stable at higher temperatures and polymers have poor solubility 
two solutions having same osmotic pressure at a given temperature are called isotonic solution. When such solutions are separated by semi-permeable membrane, no osmosis occurs between them. For example, the osmotic pressure associated with the fluid inside the blood cell is equivalent to that of 0.9% mass divided by volume. Sodium chloride solution called normal saline solution and is safe to inject intravenously. On the other hand, if we place the cells in solution containing more than 0.9 mass percent mass by volume, sodium chloride water will flow out of the cells and they would shrink. Such a solution is called hypertonic. If the salt concentration is less than 0.9 mass percent mass per volume, the solution is said to be hypotonic. In this case, water will flow into the cells if placed in this solution and they would swell. The phenomena mentioned in the beginning of this section can be explained on the basis of osmosis. A raw mango placed in concentrated salt solution loses water via osmosis and shrivel into pickle. Wilted flower received when placed in fresh water. A carrot that has become limp because of water loss into the atmosphere can be placed into the water making it firm once again. Water will move into a cell through osmosis. When placed in water containing less than 0.9% mass per volume salt, blood cells swell due to flow of water in them by osmosis. People taking a lot of salt or salty food experience water retination in tissue cells and intercellular spaces because of osmosis. The resulting puffiness or swelling is called edema. Water movement from soil into plant roots and subsequently into upper portion of the plant is partly due to osmosis. The preservation of meat by salting on of fruits by adding sugar protects against bacterial action. Through the process of osmosis, a bacterium on salted meat or candied fruit loses water, shrivels and dies. 2.6.5 Reverse Osmosis and Water Purification The direction of osmosis can be reversed if a pressure large than the osmotic pressure is applied to the solution side. That is, now the pure solvent flows out of the solution through the semi-permeable membrane. This phenomenon is called reverse osmosis and is of great particle unity. Reverse osmosis is used in desalination of seawater. A schematic setup up for the process is shown in figure 2.11. Figure 2.11 Reverse osmotic occurs when a pressure larger than the osmotic pressure is applied to the solution. When pressure more than osmotic pressure is applied, pure water is squeezed out of the sea water through the membrane. A variety of polymer membranes are available for this purpose. The pressure required for the reverse osmosis is quite high. A workable porous membrane is a film of cellulose acetate placed over a suitable support. Cellulose acetate is permeable to water but impermeable to impurities and ions present in sea water. These days, many countries use desalinization plants to meet their portable water requirement. 2.7 Abnormal Molar Masses We know that ionic compounds when dissolved in water dissociate into cations and anions. For example, if we dissolve 1 mole of KCl 74.5 grams in water, we expect 1 mole each of K plus and Cl minus ions to be released in the solution. If this happens, there would be 2 moles of particles in the solution. If we ignore interionic attractions, 1 mole of KCl 
in 1 kg of water would be expected to increase the boiling point by 2 into 0.52 kelvin is equal to 1.04 kelvin now if we did not know about the degree of dissociation we could be led to conclude that the mass of two mole particles is 74.5 grams and the mass of one mole of kcl would be 37.25 grams this brings into light the rule that when there is dissociation of solute into ions the experimentally defined molar mass is always lower than the true value molecules of ethanoic acid acetic acid dimers and benzene due to hydrogen bonding this normally happens in solvents of low dielectric constant in this case the number of particles is reduced due to dimerization association of molecules is depicted as follows it can be undoubtedly stated here that if all the molecules of ethanoic acid associate in benzene then delta tb or delta tf for ethanoic acid will be half of the normal value the molar mass calculated on the basis of this delta tb or delta tf will therefore be twice the expected value such a molar mass that is either lower or higher than the expected or normal value is called as abnormal molar mass in 1880 Vance Hoff introduced a factor i known as the Vance Hoff factor to account for the extent of disassociation or association this factor i is defined as i is equal to normal molar mass divided by abnormal molar mass is equal to observed colligative property divided by calculated colligative property i total number of moles of particles after association or dissociation divided by number of moles of particles before association or dissociation here abnormal molar mass is the experimentally determined molar mass and calculated colligative properties are obtained by assuming that the non volatile solute is neither associated nor dissociated in case of association value of i is less than unity while for dissociation it is greater than unity for example the value of i for aqueous kcl solution is close to 2 while the value for ethanoic acid in benzene is near the 0.5 inclusion of vance hoff factor modify the equation for colligative properties as follows relative lowering of vapor pressure of solvent p1 not minus p1 divided by p1 not is equal to i n2 by n1 elevation of boiling point delta tb is equal to i kbm depression of freezing point delta tf is equal to i kfm osmotic pressure of solution pi is equal to i n2 rt divided by v Table 2.4 depicts values of the factor i for several strong electrolytes for KCl, NaCl, MgSO4. I value approaches to as the solution becomes very dilute. As expected, the value of i gets closer to 3 for K2SO4. Table 2.4 value of vance hoff factor i at various concentration for nacl kcl mgso4 and k2so4 thank you for being till the end i hope this has helped you if so give thumbs up like share comment save download and subscribe you can support us by following in other platforms that link is in the description well thank you see you later maybe never